Hi guys, so we're now gonna talk about Amazon EC2 auto scaling. So auto scaling allows us to elastically scale our EC2 instances. So that's about horizontally scaling our EC2 instances by launching or terminating EC2 instances. So how does it work? Well, auto scaling will configure a certain amount of instances according to your scaling policies that you define. Then, if an EC2 status check fails, auto scaling knows to replace the instance. So in this example, this isn't about scaling as much as replacing something that's failed. So it helps you to build in that resilience to your application as well. Now, the other way it works is with metrics. So metrics are performance related information getting sent to CloudWatch and in this case, the metrics have reported that the aggregate CPU across our instances has hit 80%, so they're under quite a bit of pressure. The CloudWatch service will then notify auto-scaling, and auto-scaling will respond by launching an extra instance, so we now have more capacity. And so that's how auto-scaling works at a basic level. So it also works with elastic load balancing very well. So in this case, users connect to our load balancer, they get distributed to EC2 instances. Then if an EC2 instance fails, the load balancer reroutes the connection and then ELB takes the instance out of service. Auto scaling will be notified, it will terminate the instance and then auto scaling goes and launches a new instance and then new connections can come in. And note that this is now instance five, it used to be instance one that was here. And that's because it is a brand new instance. So auto scaling doesn't fix anything. It just terminates it and launches a new one. Now note that this architecture includes high availability and fault tolerance. So not only are you highly available across different availability zones, but auto scaling will automatically reintroduce instances into your auto scaling group after other instances fail. So you have that resiliency and that high availability. Now, when we configure auto scaling, there's a couple of things that we can use to define the configuration of the instances that we launch. The first one is called a launch configuration, and this has been around quite a long while. With a launch configuration, you specify the AMI and the instance type that you want to use. So here we've got a Linux 2 AMI and a T2 Micro. You can also configure things such as the roles, the monitoring, the tenancy, and so on. So you can see there's quite a few things that you can configure here, and also storage and security groups. So you define those in the launch configuration, and then the auto scaling group uses that launch configuration to launch your instances according to that config. Now, one thing to note about launch configs is you can't edit them. So once you've saved it, you have to use it as it is, and if you need to modify it, you basically have to create a new one with the different settings and then update your auto scaling group to use the new launch configuration. Now, another option, a bit newer, is launch templates. And AWS seems to be pushing people towards using launch templates now instead of launch configs. It's very similar, but has a few additional features. Firstly, you can have multiple versions, so you can edit your launch templates and save them as a new version. It can use dedicated hosts. You can use a combination of spot and on-demand instances, different instance types, and there's lots more advanced settings as well, like termination protection and shutdown behavior. And you can configure your instances to launch in a placement group as well. So there are more, we'll see that in the console. Let's head over there now and start creating our first auto scaling group. So I'm back in EC2. I'm gonna come down to auto scaling groups here and I'm gonna click create an auto scaling group. I'm gonna just call this ASG1. And here we can actually create a launch template. So we don't actually have one at the moment. I have some launch configs from before, but I wanna show you how to create one new. So let's click on create launch template. And this actually takes us into the launch template console. And I'm gonna call this launch template one. So let's scroll down and see what we need to configure. So firstly, I wanna select my Amazon Linux 2 AMI. So that's the first one at the top here. I can choose the instance type. Well, I wanna keep this in the free tier. So let's go for T2 Micro. 
I can choose my key pair. I've just got one, so let's select that one. We can put it in a VPC, and I'm also gonna choose my security group as well. You can then do things like configure the storage volumes, the resource tags, and the network interfaces. And then there's more advanced details here as well. So if we come down to advanced details, you see you can request spot instances, configure the shutdown behavior, and there's quite a lot of options there. I'm not gonna go through all of those. Now at the bottom here, we have user data. So let's go and grab our user data again. So I copied my user data to my clipboard, same stuff we used earlier, and I've just pasted that in. And the last thing we need to do is come up and just remember to connect our instance profile. So that's how we connect our IAM role. So I need S3 read-only permissions here. So that's everything. I'm gonna create that launch template, click on view launch templates, and now we've got this new one. Now we have to go back and just restart this wizard. So let's go back in and create our auto scaling group, call it ASG1, choose the launch template, click on next, now, this is where you could combine on-demand and spot capacity. So you can combine purchase options when you're using the launch template. We're gonna to stick to just adhering to the launch template. I'm gonna select two subnets, 2A and 2B. Click on Next. I can enable load balancing here, so I'm gonna actually attach my target group one. So remember that you attach the target group. You don't actually attach the load balancer, you attach the target group, and that has the same effect. I'm gonna enable ELB health checks. I'll talk about the two different types of health check in the next lesson in more detail. And let's click on next. This is where we can adjust our capacity. So to start with, let's put it at two, two, and two. So that's just going to have a desired capacity of two. The minimum is gonna be two and the maximum is gonna be two. So it should just launch two instances and register those with our load balancer. So we're not using any kind of scaling policy. We'll look at those more later on in this section. You can enable scale in protection. That means the auto scaling group will not terminate instances. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna click on next. I don't need any notifications or tags. So I just go through to review. It all looks good to me. So let's create the auto scaling group. So that should go ahead now and it's gonna launch those two instances and then it's going to register them with the target group. So we should find that they're available through our load balancer shortly. Now let's have a look at what's going on. So I head up to instances, and sure enough, I've got these two pending instances here. So let's go and have a look at our auto scaling group. And here we can see plenty of information about the auto scaling group. So we can check the configuration here, We've got some activity, so you'll see some entries. So here it's telling us that it's launching two different instances. We can look at the scaling options here, the scaling policies, which we'll cover again shortly. You can look at the instances here and manage them. And then we've got a monitoring tab as well. So you can monitor what's going on with your auto scaling group. Now you do need to enable this um, metric collection as well. So if you want to see that information here, you just need to go ahead and enable it. Or you can have a look at the EC2 level as well. So that will be using the EC2 standard metrics. So let's now go and have a look at our target group. And so we should see that we have some targets coming in our target group one here. And sure enough, here they are and they're healthy already. So now if we go to our load balancer, we should find that we're able to connect to our two instances. So I've put in the DNS name and now we've got Raven and I've hit refresh and I'm not getting the other one because I've left sticky sessions on. So let's go back and disable sticky sessions for our target group. So I wanted to show you that because I know that you might have done the same thing. So let's go into target group, edit attributes and just disable stickiness. So now by the time that load balancer cookie expires, we should then be able to refresh and hit our two different instances. So now I'm able to cycle and we've got these two instances called Raven and Kenzie. So that's all looking good. So that's it for this lesson. Keep your configuration running because we've got more work to do on it.